everyone welcome back to another video it feels like ages since i've done one of these probably because it is so i'm a little bit rusty with filming garden tours but this afternoon i really wanted to do a quick little walk through the garden just to share and update you all what is growing at the moment it is currently the 12th of november this uh, month is going crazily fast and i am not okay with that uh, but yeah there's lots happening in the garden and I haven't done a garden tour for quite a while so I'm going to do a little bit of a walk through the garden share what's going on now the garden it's not where I want it to be basically I mean it's never really where I want it to be and as gardeners we are constantly fighting that urge to see new things and watch things grow really quickly and then harvest things and then do it all over again and really that's not the reality of gardening. Gardening is all about patience, waiting, playing the waiting game and dealing with failure, which I talk about in so many of my videos that it is completely normal that your plants die. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the reality of what my garden looks like at the moment because it's just not fantastic a lot of the places. There's weeds, there's aphids, there's bandicoots still getting in. I'm having a lot of problems with the garden basically and for a while I was thinking like oh, I don't really want to do a garden tour when my garden is looking like this but I want to keep it real and relatable so that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> There's really not like a lot happening, um, but still quite a lot of beautiful flowers that I'll show you and I'll give you a little bit of an update on the flower farm situation as well. Uh, but I'm going to turn you around so I will face you to the garden and let's have a look at what is happening in this mid-November crazy weather year of first year gardening in this place. All right, so this is a little bit of an overview of what the cottage garden, the kitchen garden is looking like currently. For context, this was all grass here uh, at the start of the year. So in February, we started to create these gardens and my vision is to have kind of like a fairy style cottage garden full of both food and flowers and medicinal plants. And we're definitely slowly getting there. Right on the corner here, you can see these gorgeous snapdragons that are absolutely a must have in any cottage garden, I think. They're just absolutely beautiful. This was a tetra garden mix of snapdragons. So these ones you can cut, but a lot of snapdragons are really short. So I went for the taller ones so that I can have a nice long stem. And I have been cutting these and just using these in the house in little arrangements. The purple flowers down here are actually uh, garlic chives so these are also an edible flower which are fantastic in salads and on like avocado toast lots of different meals uh, you can also just use them as like cake decorations but just beware that they do kind of taste oniony um, so you can eat yeah the leaves and the flowers of this one and my oregano is also doing quite well down here um, it's starting to get a little bit uh, longer stems and I'm going to be cutting some of these and drying it just for like an Italian herb mix I think. Many of the uh, orange Californian poppies are all dying back now. Um, they have had a really nice flush as are uh, all of the broad beans here. So I harvested all of these broad beans in a previous video and I still have a few on here. I'm probably just going to try and let these grow as much as they can so that I can uh, use these as seed for next year's crop. Uh, and then all of these gorgeous straw flowers that uh, we've also been picking and I've actually been picking them more at this stage uh, because I'm going to be making some Christmas decorations with these that I'll share in an upcoming video. Now the lamb's ear are starting to go to flower which is actually what I really really wanted with these. They were taking quite a while to do that. Um, they were just kind of staying this size but now that they're actually growing longer stems like this I can use these uh, in arrangements because they last so long in water. Um, they look really great in arrangements and just, I mean, who doesn't like lamb's ear? They're just absolutely stunning. The native violets are struggling a little bit with the warmer weather um, and the lack of water. So I'm having to water these every single day, but they are cascading nicely over the pots uh, that I have them in alongside all of these gorgeous weeds that I really need to get out of the bricks here. 
I'll finish this little patch. Um, one of my roses here is kind of struggling a little bit. I just need to get on with a better feeding regime. Honestly, I haven't really done that since I planted it. The reality, that's, that's what's happening. The parsley down here is going to seed, unfortunately, so I might plant another one of those. The thyme is growing great and I've actually propagated some of this which propagates super easy so I'm going to do quite a little bit more of this because I'd really like to make just like little arrangements or little boutonnieres with thyme because it looks really really cute. Got a few poppies left. This one here is looking a little sad but um yeah uh, and then we have all of the brassicas that you'll see all look fairly similar. They pretty much look like this. <laughs> It's quite disgusting actually how many aphids are on them and I've just been taking them out of the ground and um, just chucking them in a no-dig pile, just forgetting about them because I literally just can't deal with them right now. Um, the rosemary, I'm going to need to just build up the soil around it a little bit. I planted these a little bit higher than the soil depth because when we moved, obviously we had all of the constant La Nina in the area. So I'm just gonna have to build this up a bit because it's starting to just be too far out of the soil for my liking. There's not too much more over here except some uh, catnip, which the cats have been loving. <laughs> some status, which is ready to be harvested and all of the coriander that is going to seed. We really enjoyed all of these coriander plants and they look quite pretty with their flowers so I've just left them for the bees. You'll see in pretty much the whole garden I leave majority of plants to go to seed for the bees and just to create a little bit of biodiversity in the area because um, yeah these are the first plants that I've ever been planted in this area other than grass. We'll move down the pathway to this garden over here. You can see all of the um, daffodils and jonquils I've just uh, braided basically. In another video I shared how to do that and just tucked them all in so they're nice and neat and they can continue to put nutrients down into the bulb rather than just trimming them. Uh, that's what I prefer to do with that. The strawberries, we've been getting a few that you can see in there. I've just been protecting them from birds and bandicoots, but, but I'm definitely going to move these next year and have them more in a raised bed or just somewhere that I can really dedicate just to strawberries uh, because I am finding that the slugs are really also loving life around them. <laughs> the celery is not loving the warmer weather, as you can see. Uh, but I will probably cut this back soon. I'm gonna make a big batch of stock, I think, with a lot of celery and all of the onions that we have. My rose is doing pretty well. Uh, again, this is the current state of the garden. Things just flopping over and falling over everywhere. This is all of the silver beet that I need to take out. Still some leaves on there that we can pick, but um, you know, it's not ideal considering this is a pathway so yeah we'll get on to that later uh, all of the onions the red onions didn't get around to harvesting them as you can see they've gone to seed so yeah this is what an onion seed looks like if you've never seen one they will keep flowering like this for a while and then produce hundreds of little black seeds so I'm going to probably just yeah harvest as many as I can of those but the bees are loving them, people that come to the house love them because they're not too sure what they are. I've had a few people actually ask uh, what these are. So yeah, these are onion seeds. Uh, and then all of these red poppies, uh, orange poppies I should say, are all dying back. Same with all of the chrysanthemums. What is new though is all of the beautiful carnations have now come out. I love carnations, they're one of my favourite flower and they took so long to grow from seed but you can see all of these beautiful buds that, that are on the plants now. These are a little bit close to one of the western jars that I have. This is a native plant, a really great native coastal hedge plant. I would definitely recommend these. It's also called a coastal rosemary. Such beautiful foliage and 
absolutely like no maintenance that I've had to do on that so far. This was from um, Jeff at Whitbird Environmental, this plant here. I've just noticed that my yarrow is starting to flower. So lots packed in this area you can see. I want to really build the biodiversity and the soil health. So I've planted things like yarrow, which have a deep root system. They're going to break down a lot of the soil below and also provide me with gorgeous flowers. <laughs> They're also a perennial, so they'll last a while. And then behind that is all of my feverfew, which is starting to um, kind of get some uh, flower stalks going. Also just such a gorgeous plant. Uh, I love the ferny foliage and no bug pressure. So if you're wanting a no bug uh, attracting plant, that's definitely your one to go with. It has chemicals in the plant that can deter bugs. So that's why I've planted it kind of around the garden a little bit, similar to chamomile. So those two are going great. The linaria is still looking pretty nice, going over a little bit. I can see a lot of the I can see a lot of the plants have started to seed or produce seed. So I'm hoping that they just naturalize in this area. Um, around here, I have my two cucumbers that I planted in another video. This one got completely eaten by slugs after I planted it, but now is starting to pick up and this one is doing pretty well. These are the Space Master cucumbers. I also just have a little bit of sage planted there. And then in this garden bed, similar kind of story, just a few different random plants here and there. I have a kale that's starting to come back, a golden zucchini, lots of gorgeous chamomile next to a rose as well. Yeah, the chamomile, Scott's been really loving for chamomile tea. Uh, fresh chamomile is delightful. It's not like dried chamomile at all in my opinion. It's starting to rain now so that's that's always good. <laughs> um, but yeah it actually has a little bit of an apple taste or an apple scent to it. So if you like apple definitely definitely try growing your own chamomile um, uh, for some delicious tea. And yeah I have some more beautiful snapdragons planted throughout the garden. Uh, my bay tree in this pot here has put on so much new growth, which is good to see. And I think I want to actually plant it in the ground where the broad beans are right now, eventually, and just kind of have like a little bit of a hedged tree there. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on how big bay trees grow. I will probably hedge it back quite heavily so it doesn't grow too large, but that's the plan for that. I have uh, some more chamomile, uh, some more calendula there, sorry, calendula. Uh, this is a leptospermum that I'm going to hedge back so it doesn't grow too high. I think it's called Violet Queen. I could be wrong though, um, but yeah, I really like this variety just of how the leaves look. I've got some more feverfew over there, uh, Black Beauty Zucchini. And then in this area here, today I actually just planted some tomatoes. So I planted a few beefsteak tomatoes and a random tomato that I saved seeds for and didn't properly label it. But in my mind, if I have saved the seeds, hopefully I'm going to like the tomato that grows. So we'll see what happens here. This is kind of a view from this side of the garden. Lots of lorikeets in the background. Sorry about that. They are flying off for their nighttime rest. Another Wistringa coastal rosemary here. A little bit of a sad lavender. <laughs> and I planted three little uh, Mrs. Burns lemon basil in that area. This patch here is probably the least organized slash like crazy whatever kind of garden patch, but I absolutely love it. Like, I love it. <laughs> All of the gorgeous snapdragons are the hero right now, really. I really want to come out tomorrow morning and pick some of these. Not quite the hero. It's the aphid filled broccoli. <laughs> uh, these are the two rhubarb plants that Diane gave me. 
from her garden and look how gorgeous they look. They're catching all of the, um, the bottle brush flowers, but kind of goes with the theme. It's very, uh, it's very Christmassy. So yeah, I'm loving seeing those. They just, they just look so gorgeous. Um, at the back there, I've got a, a sea mist melaleuca, which is ugh, like looking absolutely stunning. It's honestly like quadrupled in size, I'd say, and is going to look so beautiful in arrangements. Uh, some of the, all of the ranunculus have completely gone over. I do have a few cabbages in here that are starting to bud up. But yeah, they're definitely, they're definitely starting to head up, I mean, uh, which just basically means like they're putting more of their energy into creating those really thick layers that a cabbage has. I've just noticed my sage starting to go to flower in there uh, amongst all of the calendula. I didn't even realize how much sage I had, which is really cool. <laughs> uh, weeds as well, more cabbage, heaps of uh, paper daisy or straw flowers that I need to come and harvest. These ones are definitely my favorite color. I just love this color, it's so pretty. Lots more gorgeous chamomile, lots of teas in the future. Chrysanthemums going over and a type of lavender here, Canary Island lavender, I think it's called. And a woolly bush, which is very happy. So that is kind of a view of the cottage garden here. And we will walk down this way to have a look at what I did today. So behind me here I have two garden beds and I have been planting zinnias in this area today because I really need to get something in the ground in these garden beds. The soil here is really compacted as it is pretty much everywhere in the garden because we have so much grass that I'm trying to trying to remove and get rid of um, but the best thing to do if you're starting a no-dig bed over grass is to plant things planting plants in the ground is the best way to break up soil because roots of plants just do it way better than humans way way better uh, and you also just don't have to break your back or do anything to break up the soil roots can be extremely extremely small um, to break down microscopic different layers of the soil and break through hard clay even so we have that here and i have a lot of zinnias more than I need actually so I'm not too worried if they don't do fantastic in this area but it's a crop that's quick growing they're really cheap seeds um, and bonus if I get a few flowers out of it but I also just really need to have roots in these areas to start breaking up the soil I've left it probably just a little bit too late because yeah so many things basically have been happening in the last few months I've spoken a little bit more about it on my patreon page but I've basically been going through lots of eczema, lots of autoimmune problems that I'm trying to just work through uh, and that's just prevented me and I feel really really behind with all of this flower farming stuff um, and it just hasn't been making me feel fantastic basically I've been pretty down but planting all of these in is today really really did help me this is a little bit of an overview of the area I have all of this patch here planted and all of this area this area looks weird I know obviously I've got chicken wire randomly we did have a chicken come into our yard the other day or the other week long story I've kind of explained it on the channel before and also on our earthly reads podcast I needed somewhere to keep her for the morning so I just created a nice little <laughs> pen for her and it's been working to keep the bandicoot out too so I have my more prized zinnias in that area which is a lot of the queen lime red queen lime orange and benaries giant pink i think in this area and then a lot of these are like dollar seeds just ones that i have a lot of so i've got orange king uh, violet queen and lily put rose in this area i also have a few sea hollies sea hollies or oringium um, planted here 
and yeah hopefully these will help to break up the soil and give me pretty flowers <laughs> and the last area that I will show you a bit of an update on is down the flower farm down this area through all of the beds that I literally like weeded the other month and now they're just full of weeds again it's just crazy so this is the flower farm area at the moment this is where I feel embarrassed to be honest like which I know I shouldn't because it's the first year of me actually trying something like this um, but that's just how I feel and I haven't done anything I've purposefully not done anything to just show you what it looks like and just deal with it <laughs> basically my main concern still is keeping out a bandicoot that we have we have probably like 50 that's definitely over exaggerating it feels like 50 little bandicoots in the backyard they're the cutest little animals which makes it so hard and so difficult to control them um, and they're native and they're kind of like endangered in a lot of areas in Australia so I'm really lucky to have such awesome biodiversity in such a populated suburban area um, but yeah I really just don't want them anymore in the garden so we have been creating a fence and it's almost done down the back and I've been saying this for so long that we've been creating it um, but the reality is like I can say so many times I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it and then things happen and I just literally like can't go outside some days it's it's really been like that for me so yeah that's just the reality of what's happening so pretty much on a daily basis I'm coming down here seeing what plants have been dug up and replanting them which is just not really a sustainable way to go with a flower farm I am hoping that we do get the fence done um, this week is our plan but we'll just see how that goes um, other than that I have just been not really planting much in this area and netting things where I really don't want the bandicoot getting into um, but there are a lot of flowers in here that thankfully I can harvest so let's just focus on those for this little bit so I have four main beds in this area and wherever you see little holes is going to be where the bandicoot has gone thankfully it's been staying out of the snapdragons which I did net and these are all ready to be cut ASAP so tomorrow morning I'm going to come out and cut a lot of these these are a lot of the um I think these ones are one of the apple blossoms that I have really really gorgeous and yeah I absolutely just love snapdragons they are so pretty particularly these deep pink ones and hopefully when I cut these um, so I've really cut them around here to have a nice long stem when I cut these they'll hopefully send out shoots where I cut them so fingers crossed for, for that to see how they go I do have quite a few more in here that are almost and slash are touching the net so I'm having to take off the net of that pretty soon and another thing in this area that I have planted is lots of beetroot, which we have been enjoying. And you saw me harvest in another video and I need to come through and thin a few more of these. Um, but yeah, the beetroot did really, really well. Also um, had some onions that are all going to flower and seed. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those. I just didn't have that good luck with red onions, a cabbage that I need to pick and lots of um, brown onions. Can't remember the type of onions these are actually, but they are looking really nice and they are starting to go to flower slash seed some of them. So yeah, I really need to take all of these out of the ground and I'm gonna make like a massive stock with a lot of these and just enjoy them, probably cut them up and freeze them, I think. Or mince them up um, and just have heaps you know like in the freezer to use for stir fries and that kind of thing back there the cornflowers all just <laughs> really died from the rain it was just too wet for them and I don't have too much in the back bed here except a few little yarrow plants that are struggling this is the state of like all of the garden beds I have crap literally everywhere to try and to try and deter this 
freaking little bandicoot and I still need to mulch all the pathways and um, yeah, <laughs> it's not fantastic. What is great to see though, that even though a lot of the plants I'm having to just replant them, that they are still flowering. So tomorrow or the day after, I'm going to just come out and cut as much as I can from all of this status uh, because I can dry all of these and just use these as dried flowers. So I do actually have quite a lot of status here. My favorites are probably this one here, the apricot pink, which look amazing with the white snapdragons. Just dig that back in. Oh dear. Um, the green manure also really needs to be covered. So that's another job. And all of this area here is probably going to be pumpkins. I need to just lift it up and have a look at how much of the grass has died back and then put some cardboard over it. And yeah, this is a, this is just a ridiculous messiness of what's going on right now. Got some billy buttons, more eryngium, that's a mess. Gorgeous status that needs to be dug back in. So pretty. Grass needs to be mown. <laughs> Haven't been able to because it's been so wet. This area down the back here is where I'm going to. So many birds around. This area down the back here is where I'm going to be basically creating a whole little rainforest garden I've decided. I've recently purchased quite a lot of plants that are native to the area. Tube stocks that I'm going to be planting all around the back area here because I just want it to be a native area that I can just walk through and just enjoy gorgeous native plants. So um, that's what that area is going to be. Also, I just swear I hear like a goat every day around here. It's freaking ridiculous because it's suburbia, but I don't know. People do weird stuff around here. Not that having a goat is weird. Like I've literally want goats at some point in my life, but does the blocks around here like aren't that big? Like what is, what is it doing all day? I, look, I, I have no idea. <laughs> there it goes again. And then behind me here is my um, kind of like more coastal, flower native area where I have lots of leptospermums, um, native grasses, malaleucas, baronias, banksia and it has been my chop and drop area as you can see it's just where I chop and drop a lot of the things from all of the other garden areas um, and I'm just smothering the grass here. I've put cardboard down. We even use like the cat litter that we have because it's biodegradable and we're not planting any food or anything in this area. It's just native plants that are looking really, really amazing. And I'm loving seeing the progress on um, all of these plants. A lot of them are from Jeff at Whitbird Environmental who I do work with. And it's just been so awesome to get to know people who are growing native plants around this area because they're just so so easy to grow like there's so many cultivars that you can buy in the nurseries of you know different species like grevilleas or leptospermums or whatever uh, which i granted like i do have some of those in the garden here but if you can find your but if you can get your hands on things that have like provenance to your area as tube stock because tube stock is always superior in my opinion uh, because it has enough time to actually get used to your soil and it's just going to grow so much faster definitely recommend because you might find that there's so many native varieties of things that you see in the nursery uh, but they're native to your area and they're just going to grow so so much better so definitely do your research and I will be sharing the journey of planting the rainforest area behind me I'd really like to start that soon because um, now is just a perfect time to get plants in the ground because everything is growing like crazy. So yeah, I'm super excited for that and kind of make it like a little fairy rainforest walk that you can just meander, have a nice relaxing walk through an area and that's nice and shaded and protected and it's going to be absolutely beautiful in my opinion. So that is about it for the garden tour. I really hope you enjoyed seeing 
what my garden is looking like at the moment and I don't want you to think of this as like me complaining or whatever like I'm actually fine with how the garden looks it's nice but I don't need all of like the encouragement or things like that to you know say like oh no you're actually really doing well like everything's fine because I know I have done so much in this garden space and I am really proud of myself and as gardeners we need to be just a little bit nicer to ourselves sometimes like take a step back and like even if you grow one thing this year like that's amazing you've grown some food or you've grown some beautiful flowers or a native plant increased biodiversity increased habitat for things like absolutely amazing gardening is a slow process and when you think about it like brilliant gardens are not created overnight or even just in one year it takes years and years to create your dream garden what you think you might want so just taking small steps at a time even if you've got a bandicoot even if you've got pests even if you've got weeds even if you've had three La Niñas, which we've had this year and probably are going to have more rain, that's fine. We, we, we can do this. <laughs> so yeah, I am super, super proud of myself for growing all of the flowers that I've grown. And I would love to know if you've made it this far in the video, tell me in the comments something that you're super proud of yourself this year that you've done in the garden or you've planned or made steps towards. I'd love to know so that we can kind of uplift each other a little bit more because we need to be doing that more for ourselves and for each other so i'm super excited to hear what you're all proud of in your garden at the moment or something you've achieved this year like always i have so many dreams and so many goals and so many plans for this beautiful garden that i can't wait to continue sharing with you all and just thank you so much for watching my videos and commenting and subscribing and liking and doing all the things you do it really means a lot i read all of the comments sometimes don't get back to them all because you know i'm busy but i read them all and i appreciate it so so much so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and until my next one happy gardening everyone mm -hmm.